So I kind of wanted to spend today talking about sear zones. When I first got this barbecue grill, this gas barbecue grill, it has actually two sear burners and I loved it at first. But I think over the years I got kind of lazy with them and I'm noticing now that my food kind of tastes disgusting. So let me share with you guys what I learned and things to avoid using these side propane sear burners. So yep, this barbecue grill has two sear burners. There's one dedicated off to the left called a sear zone, and there's one inside the grill. They're both infrared and they can get really hot. They have a honeycomb design. And to be honest, they do a really good job at getting really hot really quick, but they each have their own pros and cons and downsides. Let's start off with the one off to the side, the dedicated one, because I got really really lazy with this one okay the side tier zone is definitely the stronger of the two and when i first got my gas grill well actually before this grill i had another gas grill that was very similar the older model of this guy um all it had was that side tier zone i went crazy right i used it every single time i wanted to sear in particular i found it incredibly useful when doing anything regarding sous vide Rather than using a blowtorch, I could just preheat it and then sear away. At the time, I was mindful of the fundamentals, right? The stuff that I preach to you guys every single day. I made sure to keep my temperatures in check, didn't overdo it, let it preheat, do all those great things, and then sear it away. Over time, over the years, I've gotten kind of lazy and impatient and i'm just kind of cranking up the dial now every single time and throwing the meat on there before it's had a time to preheat and all that what i've noticed is my food is tasting like propane it's tasting like gas the same similar propane taste that you get when you're using the blowtorch and you're way too close to the blue part and then you start tasting the residue on your steaks it's the same thing with this guy, but the problem with this guy is there's not much distance between the flame, the honeycomb, and the, uh, well, the rail or the grate. So it's very easy to get that chemically taste. Here's my suggestions. Here's what I've found out. I had to dial things back a little bit, not get as excited. You need to preheat these guys. You still need to preheat them. You want the honeycomb to be glowing and fully ignited and then let everything warm up. And basically what you're doing there is you're allowing those fumes, everything to kind of burn off, right? And do their thing so you don't get any residue on your food. Number two, make sure you can do this initially, but you don't need to go full throttle every single time. So if you're preheating it, yeah, sure, go full throttle and then dial it down. But when you're actually searing, you don't need full power. I mean, they get hot really, really quick. You're actually gonna burn your food. Not even sear it, you're just gonna burn the hell out of it. So I found that sticking to medium heat while searing does a fantastic job. It works fine. And again, I think when you dial it up to full power, not only are you, are you going to burn your food, you're not necessarily gonna be searing at that point, but you're also running the risk of those fumes again kind of like not igniting or maybe it's again i just think it's the grate the grate's too low this particular model the grate's way too low to the honeycomb so there's no way of adjusting that so sometimes you just get like an, an odor of fuel you know that propane taste in your food but i mean honestly all the budget friendly grills at this price point they all look like they have very similar sear zones some of the more expensive ones yeah they're different but yeah, I think you just have to be a little bit more careful. And then the last thing is number three. And this is something that I would constantly forget to do um, when I first started using it. Make sure you continuously flip your steak, right? So you can get that even cooking throughout. We want that sous vide-like cooking. 
So even if you've sous vide your steak, but you're not constantly flipping it, you're kind of, you know, you're getting that gray band around your steak. No one wants that. So make sure you're flipping your steaks, getting the sear, you know, all rotating and alternating your steak. That's a big deal too. And you want even coverage. Now, ironically, inside the sear burner, that one's actually a little bit easier to use, kind of. It has some flaws, but it has one big design advantage that the side sear zone does it. Let's talk about that one real quick. Okay, now the internal sear burner is way different. Number one, it's guarded with its own burner cover or deflector, which actually helps distribute the heat a lot better. And number two, you still have the grates on top. So I think you're just overall, you're being shielded a little bit better from all those fumes and propane. And also I suspect that the internal plumbing inside the grill is a lot different than the side sear zone plumbing. So in general, I found that when I sear with the internal burner, the, the sear burner, the infrared burner, whatever they want to call it, it's better, more consistent results when it comes to flavor and taste. However, there's one big design flaw. Remember I said everything has its pros and cons. Let me show you guys. So I'm sure you guys can tell right off the bat, but it is way, way smaller than the side sear zone. I mean, and this one's a little bit longer, but width wise, it's about three of these. You still get the honeycomb. I'm looking at the honeycomb design. It looked identical, but it's just so much more smaller. So when you have everything on top, for example, here's the, here's the flavorizers, right? And then your grates. This is all you have right here. Yeah, it's distributing some heat and of course you're gonna have the other burners but the other one's just way more effective at getting an even sear this one's a hell of a lot better when it comes to flavor and avoiding the propane taste flavor afterwards so what does this all mean to you i don't know i guess i'm just frustrated with the side sear zone and the internal burner and honestly i don't actually use them all that much if i'm doing sous vide or something like that i just found it to be very convenient but in general Searing with the gas grill is kind of cumbersome. I don't know, sometimes they don't get hot enough and you want that like flame to touch the food and, and sometimes you can taste the propane flavor. In general, I like searing with my charcoal grill. I just think hands down charcoal is just so much better when it comes to heat and flames and taste. It's just not as convenient to always have to light it or it's not that great or responsive when you gotta manage the temperatures quickly. For weekday cooking or weeknight cooking, I think there's probably nothing more convenient than a gas grill. But for my weekend stuff, when it really matters, it's my charcoal grill and stamp. That's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative and thank you for listening. If you did, please consider subscribing and I will catch you in the next video.